Hi. So every now and then I get asked how I go about doing my astrophotography. I thought I would do a little uh, tour of my observatory and some of the equipment that I use. So let's go have a look. is it inside so you can see uh, behind me there's the uh, there's the mount and uh, yeah we'll do a do a quick tour so here we have the computer this is what everything runs off of and um, I actually once I get everything set up and going I um, I remote into it from the house so I don't have to stay out here if I don't want to here's a little dehumidifier I keep this in here to uh, keep it running, um, keep the humidity down. This is my white LED panel. This is what I use to take flat frames, which are a, a type of calibration frame used. It corrects for vignetting, um, dust motes, other lens, optical situations that you don't want in your, uh, in your photos. So I also have these ratchets. These uh, lock down the roof during uh, bad weather so they're on all four corners here and that keeps it from uh, blowing away I hope my little uh, street lamp light <laughs> I thought that was kind of a neat touch in here uh, the color is kind of this flat grayish blue it was really just some leftover paint um, and it works out really well to keep it dark in here we have a Brando's chair so want to hang out and relax um, remote temp monitor so I can keep an eye on how warm or how cool it gets out here and really it never gets too cool but it is nice to know how warm it's getting I don't think it's ever got above 90 in here so really not bad do you notice nothing's insulated the reason for that is I want it to cool down quick I don't want the walls to hold any heat so when I open the roof everything can just cool down very fast and being that we live in this temperate climate it never gets too hot where I worry about it getting overheat or the equipment's getting overheated so now to the the main guts this is the concrete pier which is isolated from the walking deck so that uh, you can walk around in here and not have vibrations transfer through it's my power panel coming in um, little platform I've got um, in between the metal pier and the concrete so this kind of this plywood is sort of dampens the contact between the metal pier and the concrete pier and I left a little bit of shelf on it so I could put things which ended up being space for all my power converters this is the dew heat control this controls the dew straps which I'll show you in a moment and that it just slightly warms the front of the telescope and it keeps dew from forming when the dew point hits so that you can go deep into the night when there's dew all around and your lens won't have any dew on it so that's really important especially here <sighs> okay so this is the mount this is what controls where the telescope is pointing it tracks the stars um, this is I would say, well, all the pieces are important, but this is a very, very important, you can't, you don't want to get use a cheap mount. If you have a cheap mount, you're never going to get decent photos. You'll get okay photos, but you'll never go to that next level. Um, so I started out with a very budget mount, and once I knew that I was enjoying this hobby, then I 
I moved up to something a little more premium and uh, you know this is this is a great mount and it's it's worked great for me I um, I really enjoy it so anyway. here is the telescope this is um, a Takahashi uh, TSA 102 it's got a 102 millimeter front objective um, I believe stopped down it's at f oh I want to say f5 point something I'm uh, sorry I'm not sure offhand but anyway the uh, this is what is collecting the light and focusing the light down onto my camera this is the camera right here this big black thing it's got a filter wheel inside it um, which I will show in a bit um, this is all the power the cooling fans um, this little guy up here is another little camera which is used for guiding so this is part of the auto guiding system it helps make sure the mount stays on track there's a little prism in here and it picks off just the outer edge of the light this little dealie here is a motor which is for the focusing it's the focusing mechanism so this is so you can precisely focus on the stars um, you can get focused by hand pretty good but this does very minute steps which makes it super accurate and the more accurate the clearer your photo these are just some extra clamps on top in case I want to mount another scope up here. These bands, these are the dew heaters I was telling you about. So that controller back there, just a slight bit of heat and that's all it takes to, to uh, keep the dew from forming. So this is pretty much the setup. We have counterweights here. You want everything perfectly balanced. So it's balanced in this direction and it's balanced in this direction. This is called the right ascension. This is the, the axis that actually turns at the same speed of the earth. And then this is your declination. This is, um, this just points where you need to in the sky and it very, very minimally moves with the help of the guider to help track the stars. But this rotation, is what's actually following the same rotation of the earth which keeps the stars from trailing well that was a mouthful but um yeah i think that's really it for in the observatory i'm going to show you guys the inside of the camera so you can see what the filter wheel looks like um yeah it's it's good stuff and i will uh yeah see you in a few show you the camera that I use um, it's actually not this particular camera but the one I'm using is um, made by the same company and it just has a slightly smaller sensor than this camera um, but I'll give you a better close-up of how the filters work and uh, electronic filter wheel. So first we need to open it up. Okay. All right, 
right, so now we have it open. This is the filter wheel here. Um, you can see this is an eight position filter wheel. It has eight separate slots for filters to go. And as you, you program in your filter selection in your capture software, and so when it's time to say select the blue filter, it will rotate until the blue filter is covering the sensor right here. So each position has a number, so you put in your filters and assign them a number, and then you can label them in your capture software. This particular filter wheel takes either um, 1.25 inch filters or 31 millimeter filters. I use 31 millimeter, they are slightly larger. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. I'll probably do a, another video at some point when I'm actually doing imaging. So if you're interested in this and, or if you liked this and you're interested in watching that, go ahead and like and subscribe to my channel and uh, hit the notification bell and let you know when I, when I upload some more. So yeah, anyway. Thanks for watching and uh, hope you have a great day. See you later.